What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. I think I might have put together my cheapest emulation setup to date. Now that's without getting free parts. I've got a lot of free computers and done videos on those, but this whole setup here cost me 25 bucks. Recently I went to visit a few friends and they live way out in the country. And as I was driving, I noticed this little resale store. Now it's right out in front of somebody's house. So I figured I'd stop on the way back. And I'm really glad I did because I was able to score this plus a lot of other awesome stuff. I got some Sega Genesis games, some Mac minis, and even a Lenovo desktop. But I wanted to check this out first. I picked up this Toshiba laptop here with the charger for five bucks. I was also able to score one of the old HP netbooks with the first Atom. It's also got a broken screen. I'm pretty sure it's broken. Waiting on a charger for this. I was also able to pick up this 19 inch 4x3 Acer monitor and a PS3 controller. Now the monitor was five bucks, the PS3 controller was 10. It was the most expensive thing I bought in this lot. I was also able to find a power cable, VGA, and an old school micro USB for the PS3 controller. So in total, I have around $24 into this whole setup here. Cheaper than a Raspberry Pi, yes, it's gonna burn more power and take up more space, but I should get some pretty good emulation performance out of this old laptop. Like I mentioned, the screen on the laptop is totally destroyed. I could see that it was cracked when I picked it up in the store. And I'm not going to purchase a screen and replace it. I'm just going to use the VGA out on the laptop to this 19 inch monitor. Obviously, this is an old Toshiba laptop and I couldn't check the specs on it because I had no cell service when I bought this, but it has an AMD Athlon 2 P340. This is a dual core processor at 2.2 gigahertz, 250 gigabyte, 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive and three gigabytes of RAM. To my surprise, it's DDR3. Figured it would be DDR2. So I went ahead and installed Botocera on the internal hard drive. I'm not sure how long this hard drive is going to last me, but if you're interested in installing this operating system, I've done a bunch of tutorials. I'll leave links in the description. This is a full standalone emulation OS, sort of like RetroPie. And if you happen to pick up an old laptop or desktop without a hard drive pre-installed, you can run this all from a USB drive. But since this already had a 250 gigabyte drive in it, I figured I'd install it to the internal. The laptop doesn't have Bluetooth built in, but you could use a USB adapter if you really want wireless controllers. But for this setup here, I'm just going to plug in this PS3 controller and test out a few games. I figured I'd start off with some lower end stuff. I know this laptop's going to handle SNES, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and even Super Graphics, as you can see here. Another one I was sure it was going to run was PlayStation 1. It doesn't take much to run PS1 games, and it's running them perfectly, as you can see. But what about PSP? This is God of War. It's handling it okay, but we still get some dips every once in a while. And this even happens on one of my main PCs that's much more powerful than this. So it really comes down to the optimization of the PP SSPP emulator. Overall, most titles are going to run fine on a laptop like this, but you're going to run into some like this, God of War, Killzone, and Midnight Club that just aren't going to perform well. I'll test one more PSP here. This is a game that performs pretty well on a lot of systems, so I figured it'd do well here. This is Burnout, and we're getting a constant 60 FPS. I'm at 1x resolution, and with this game, we could probably go up to two. Here's 007 GoldenEye for N64. I also tested Conker's Bad Fur Day and it runs it really well. Now if it were up to me running N64 on this machine, I'd have to install some version of Windows and use Project 64. You're going to get much better performance out of that, but if you want to use Moopin in Botocera, it's definitely playable. Unfortunately, there's no way to display the FPS in Botocera, but it is running a bit slow, I can tell you by the gameplay here. Finally, GameCube using the Dolphin emulator. 
It's just not going to cut it on this machine. Even if you were in Windows using DirectX 11, I'm pretty sure it's going to be slow. This is unplayable. So overall, for a $24 piece together emulation setup, it actually performs pretty well. I was expecting a bit better performance in Dreamcast and GameCube, and we might be able to get a little better out of it if we move to Windows where we can use DirectX 11, but I seriously doubt that it's going to do GameCube at full speed even over on that OS. A setup like this is possible for a really low price, and you might even run into some of these laptops for free from a friend's mom or grandma, somebody who's had a laptop sitting around for a long time with a broken screen. They're probably never going to get it fixed, so it can't hurt to ask if you could have it or even buy it for a really low price. So like I mentioned at the beginning, I was able to pick up some other stuff from this shop, like these Sega Genesis games. Now the labels are pretty much toast on them, but the games do work. I was also able to pick up a few 2006 Mac Minis. Now I'm not exactly sure what I can do with these yet. I heard you can't boot from USB without some modification. I'm going to work on it this weekend. It'd be cool to run Android or something like that on these little Mac Minis. But the Lenovo in the middle is one of my favorite desktops. I actually have the exact same model that I've been using for the last two years as my work machine. It stays on 24-7, and I've never had an issue with it. This has a dual-core i5-4570T with built-in Intel HD 4400 graphics, and yes, this will run GameCube at full speed. If you're interested in seeing some kind of operating system running on this little Lenovo, let me know in the comments below. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Really appreciate you watching. I was hoping for a little better performance out of this laptop, but you get what you pay for. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.